So I'm out in the building here and you know, we've got some more shelves set up, lots of more uh, moving around and stuff. We still got a list. I've still got to keep action on eBay and the whole works. We just finished scanning um, this right here and there's roughly, geez, I think 485 listings in this bag. So obviously we've got a bunch more still to go in here. Everything you see, it's just temporarily in a spot. I would personally rather have it all over here, cut my bills in half by not paying for two different places and two storage units, and just get up early, spend a little time, come in here and do some work each day. You know, every day we've been doing stuff. Right now we're worrying about the house. I've got a bunch of stuff to put into the house and move around, furniture here, furniture there. We just moved it over here to get it all over here to cut the bills. Like uh, the cabinets I brought in here, I needed to get them out of storage because I'm paying for storage and it keeps increasing the amount of money I have into them. Uh, it also increases the chance of water damage or something else from the storage unit. We weren't very happy with the way there was openings and animals and all kinds of stuff could have got in there. So anyway, it was a temporary as well as some of the other storage unit stuff that we had to get out. I also out of garages and a few other places like that. So get it out. Cut the cost down immediately. Work through it until you're ready to get it done. That's my take on it. This is what we planned. I wasn't gonna immediately do everything. The roof, we are waiting. Uh, we've got a few little spots where a couple drips come in when it's really high and heavy rain out here. Uh, the door they put in over there, the brand new one leaks, so I'm gonna have to take care of that. But we'll do some videos. I'll show you as we, we finish those off, but it won't be very long. Septic tanks coming in. We're having one put in just for the building. We've already approved the estimate, 6,700 to put a septic tank in just for the eBay building so we can have water and all that kind of stuff out here. We still got a list. I've still got to keep action on eBay and the whole works. We just finished scanning um, this right here. And there's roughly, geez, I think 485 listings in this bag here, mostly beer labels wine labels, um, alcohol labels, bourbon labels, all sorts of different things in here. And overall, there's, geez, probably, I don't know, 10,000, 15,000 in this bag here. We're listing some as well. This is the current number that we're listing. If you know how I work, you know where to find that at. But anyway, I picked up some slides not too long ago. It's something I pick up all the time. I've probably got 25, 30,000 35 millimeter slides in house. I buy them when they're dirt cheap. I'll buy racks of them if I can buy them all. I don't care about the slide uh, projector or anything else like that. But what I'm always looking for out of them would be um, red border like these. That's a red border. Now I always get a question, well, how do you know which way they go? Well, you shouldn't be able to see the red border. So when you're looking at them, look at them from the back side. So the red border is facing away from you and the image will be in the correct direction. Just FYI, I get people ask that all the time. The red border ones though, in this case, as have been in, I don't know, dozens of other cases as well, are military and they're from soldiers who were in Japan from uh, 46 through 57, 50, well actually 54 I think this group is. So 1946 through 1954, there may be a couple from 55. I know there's a bunch of dates on these as well. Now overall most people just sell these in a bulk lot. If I go to an estate sale, I can pick up, geez, a bunch of these. Sometimes like almost a suitcase full of these and sometimes I've found them in suitcases even as well. Now, I don't have much into these. Maybe I paid a dollar or so for a box. Now, I had some of these in the plastic holders that would go in the actual projector. Uh, it holds 60 of them, and I actually just dumped them out. They're spring-loaded. You turn them upside down, they all fall out, and you can stuff probably three times as much in one of these boxes, so it, it gets rid of the space. And if you're going to go through them, this is a perfect way to actually store them. You can just label a couple every 10 with a little piece of paper sticking out, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, all the way down. And then you can store them with like some other number system here. So this might be box B and I'll do B9. So it would be right past the first number one and then on and on. Or you can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G and, you know, label them individually if that's really what you want. I don't go to that route, but anyway, I do separate them. So when I list them, I'm going to show you in a minute here, probably the best device 25 bucks will buy you. I'll 
show you how to get it in the whole works. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've got the actual equipment to scan these um, in the in the scanner. I've got you know flatbeds to scan them and all sorts of things. And I'm going to show you something extremely helpful that will be great for stuff like this. You can even use it for eight millimeter, sixteen millimeter, thirty five millimeter motion picture films, transparencies, and the whole works. So let me show you this twenty twenty five dollar piece right here. This is actually I think I got this off of Amazon. Now I've got an animation thing on here. You won't obviously have that the pegboard on there, but let's just show you how it works real quick. Nothing to it. There's a power Power cord obviously it's USB tap the button now the first tap you do may not be as bright as it gets so if you touch it it'll go dimmer come back in you can get it all the way up as bright as it goes so that's the key to using it don't just turn it on and assume it's as bright as it goes now I use it for slides this allows anybody uh, to enter the field and mess with these without having to buy a couple hundred dollar scanners this works about as good as some of the better scanners that I've seen out there for like slides and things like that. There are specific ones just for slides. I've got one for, you know, eight millimeter film. There's one for 16 millimeter and there's an expensive jobby that no one's going to own like us for 35 and, you know, above. But anyway, this thing is a, a wonderful piece. You can use it for negatives. You can use it for uh, transparencies of any type. You can also use this for eight millimeter uh, film, stretch it across there, take a picture, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter motion picture film. It works for all of those. I'm gonna put a link to one of these in there because I honestly recommend everybody getting one of these things. I've used it since I had it almost on a weekly basis. Sometimes I'm using it every day of the week if we're doing a bunch of slides or something like that. It's awesome. I, I promise you for 25 bucks or whatever it is nowadays, it's a great item. And there's a bunch of them. This one's probably one of the cheaper ones. Some of these go up to 60 and 70 bucks. Uh, the only thing I'd say is the top surface has a plastic coating and you can scratch it. So don't put any metal on it. I use it for cardboard negatives and things like that, cardboard slides and things. If you've got like 3D slides, like the actual stereoscopic slides, you can use those in here, whatever. Any type of slide, the mass produced ones, the transparencies, any of that kind of stuff. It's honestly a good tool. It's fun, you can use it for a bunch of other things. If you're an artist, you can draw and do animation with it. That's what I've hooked up and I've done some with this too. I've done some videos using this with some uh, line drawings from TV shows, some actual animation drawings and, and stuff like that too. So it, it works great for a ton of stuff. So this is why these are so great for your business right here. You can get your camera, your cell phone, or whatever you want zoomed in. Now turn out the lights behind you. I've got lights on behind me, but if you don't turn them out, it'll be a, a little bit um, blurred out or, or something. So I would recommend turning off the lights behind you. Now you'll have to find out what works best for you. Obviously, I'm casting a shadow because there's lights above me. Now I just actually turned out the lights so there's no shadow anymore. So if you look, the images look great, but you can't read the actual text on it. But that's not the point. You want to want the images. Now, these are of soldiers and things. They're shots in uh, Kyoto. Again, you'll have to get it at the right spot on here. There's some excellent images in here, though, as you can see. Now, uh, there's helicopters. I've got airplanes. I've got hangars. Now, this is a bar inside view with a bunch of GIs drinking. It's obviously a Japanese bar of some sort. There's a market. There is a post office box right there. Here is a tattoo artist here drawing out a plan of a girl. Um, there's Monkey Island, there's some more Kyoto, there's some more soldiers and things like that. Um, baseball game going on. This one's really neat right here. You've got a car. You can see the license plate on it as well, and he's right next to a horse-drawn wagon, which is really interesting. I love that you can actually ID some of these places, not just by the information written on them, but by, you know, actually using a Google uh, search on them and actually translating some of the actual wording on it. All I gotta do is set the camera up and I can just take a picture of it. I don't have to worry about the long process of scanning or anything else like that. Taking a picture of these is usually the quickest and easiest way and you get a real good image of them. You know, it's hard to do this without, you know, buying an expensive scanner until these came about. I know light tables have been around for a long time, but these cheapo ones here allow anybody to get into this 
and to be able to do quality images off of this. Now I'm just using a GoPro. I don't have any super tech on here on the video uh, here, but if I pull out my good, you know, high def Sony A2400 A or even our Nikons like the D53 or 7300, it does about as good using this $20, $25 item as it does using, you know, a $1,000 camera or something like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Smart to dress the part, gentlemen prefer hands. With all the ladies draped in crepe, the artist loves the human shape. Gentlemen prefer hands. Hands will make you smooth and silky, shapely, sexy. Wear a pair and you could be captured for posterity. Gentlemen prefer hands.